Hello my friends, my name is Bella. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to your new favorite place on the internet. I love talking about books and K-dramas and anime and literally anything and everything that makes me happy. I love sharing with you guys. So if this is your first time or if you've been coming back for a while now, thank you so much for being here. I hope we have a wonderful time talking about my July TBR. A July TBR or just a TBR in general is fun, sure. But how about if I don't even know what the books are? Like that sounds even better. <laughs> so I went ahead and wrapped all of my books that I haven't read. I'm so brave for doing this right now. Um, <laughs> okay, so I've wrapped, wait, espérate. I've wrapped every single one of my unread books um, and I've numbered them. Stop, don't, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> Okay, so I have wrapped, I have wrapped every single one of my unread books and I have brought them to you guys because I just thought it would be fun to get like a random number generator and then let those books be my July TBR. Like I literally have zero control. I have zero influence on what books I'm going to be reading on July. And I just thought it was like a nice little plot twist. I have with me a random number generator here on my phone. I'm going to record this so you guys know I'm not lying. That's not, that's not recording. Okay, so. Uh, yes, yeah, totally. I mean, perfect. That That is definitely going to make this recording a lot easier. Thank you so much for this. I feel like you guys are so far away from me though. So like, can we, oh my God, look at that. Aren't we so much closer now? Um, hi, don't. Hi, <laughs> why am I suddenly shy? Let's go. Stop, don't let it be 13. Don't let it be 13. Don't let it be 13. <sighs> Can you stop spinning? Oh my God, it's seven. Okay, wait, which one is number seven? Oh, hello. Okay, I have like a little hint up here telling me what the book is about. And I think I only have one, one book that is that i could use this word for and i think it's the vampire lestat from anne rice so i guess we're going to find out together stop why am i having so much fun okay yep it's the vampire lestat by anne rice this is the sequel to interview with a vampire which i read last year and i really really enjoyed and i've heard that the sequel is even better so i am very excited for this i kind of wanted to leave it for october but i am feeling kind of spooky even though like we're in the middle of summer i'm feeling pretty spooky so i might as well this is very floppy as well so it gets bonus points for that i didn't even mention how many books i wanted to unwrap i think i'm gonna go for like maybe six or seven Obviously, I'm going to be reading more than six books in July, but I also don't want to overdo it because there are some books that I don't own physically yet that I am definitely going to be reading, like the sequel to The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I'm definitely going to be reading that one this month. I'm also going to be reading the novella of that same series. And I also, oye, espérate. <laughs> I also really want to finish Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I am on page 562 and this has 963 pages. So I'm still missing 400 pages and I really want to finish it this month. I don't want to overdo it with the unwrapping of books. So I think I'm just going to go for six. Let's see what our second number is. How do I, let's spin it again. Anyways, how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing wonderful. I hope you're doing fantastic. Um, somebody's texting me right now. <laughs> okay, number nine, stop. Okay. <laughs> okay, the only hint that I have is it's gay. <laughs> um, I love that. I've been needing some gay content in my life. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm just gonna pretend that that is a thing that I said on the internet just now. Anyways, I'm pretty sure I know what this one is because I don't have currently that many gay books in my TBR. So I think this could be one of those Dan Mei novels that like the Chinese fantasy wrote. Yep, I was correct. This is the scum villains self-saving system self-saving system 
and apparently it's like based on a video game or like a webtoon. Our main character is a fan of a novel that exists in his world, but suddenly he dies and he's reborn into this novel. A trashy web novel series. Half demon Luo Binghe, Binghe rose from humble beginnings and a tortured past to become unrivaled in strength and beauty. With his dominion over both the human and demon realms and his hundred strong harem, he is truly the most powerful protagonist in a trashy web novel series. Okay, so our main character dies and he meets this strong, powerful protagonist and now they're together in this web novel, in this trashy web novel. That sounds really, really fun. I'm so happy this came up. This, this just looks really fun. Look at them, that's stunning. Okay, I am very, very excited for this choice. It looks so cute, but also really fun. I cannot wait. So far, we've only gotten single numbers, so I'm hoping for this one. Okay, we got 11! Thank you so much! Adult romance. Oh, maybe this is before I let go? I could be wrong about that. I am so good at this game. Shut up. It's Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I literally wrapped these books like three months ago. I can't believe I still remember this. But anyways, Before I Let Go is a book that I actually received thanks to Book of the Month, who is not sponsoring this video, but I still really appreciate them. So shout out to Book of the Month. Um, Before I Let Go, I've heard is very sad and very... What's that word? It's like very emotional and very tragic. Apparently it's about this couple who is dealt a very devastating blow and they break up. It couldn't save their marriage. It's hot, it's illicit, it's all good until old wounds reopen. Is it too late for them to find forever or could they even be better the second time around? Okay, it's kind of giving Taylor Swift. <laughs> not gonna lie like every single thing that i read today and maybe for the next couple of months is going to be taylor swift coded because today is taylor swift speak now taylor swift's version from the vault taylor swift how many times have i said taylor swift anyways <laughs> my mind is so taylor swift right now it's kind of hard for me not to relate everything to her but anyways before i let go is the third book that i'm going to be reading for july i have tried to read it before and i only got to like page 10 because i just really wasn't in the mood for a romance but i think i am now and i love that so far we've gotten like very different books like we have an adult vampire fantasy novel we have a chinese gay romance and now we have an adult romance so i'm kind of scared because there are certain books that i really don't want to read this month no bad vibes let's just see what the next number is number 12 okay no no, I don't want to read this one. I really don't want to read this one. No, I don't want to read this one and I'll tell you why. The hint is Christmas and I don't want to read a Christmas book in the middle of the summer, especially when I'm feeling extra spooky. Can I please spin one more time? I swear I'm only going to ignore this one once. I just really don't want to read a Christmas book. I know exactly which one this book is and I don't want to read it for this for july so the next number is 18. number 18 is oh, i know which one this is this is recommended by subscribers and i know exactly which one this is like of course there are a lot of books that could be recommended by subscribers but i know i know this one i know this one i know it and i'm kind of scared because it's like historical fiction and i've heard that it's really sad this is the kite runner yeah, it's The Kite Runner written by Khalid Husseini. I've heard a lot of things about this book. First and foremost, the fact that it's very emotional and I'm probably going to end up sobbing according to my subscribers. This was also very kindly sent to me by a subscriber. So I'm excited, but I'm also scared. Like they wrote a whole 
page. I love that so much. I don't really know much about it. I do know that it's set around a war and it maybe follows a friendship between two boys who get separated because of said war. An epic exploration of the ties that bind sons to fathers and boyhood friends to one another and of the forces that tear them apart. Their oncoming bond is torn by Amir's choice to abandon his friend amidst the increasing ethnic, religious, and political tensions of the dying years of the Afghan monarchy and apparently dissolved when Amir and his father flee to California to escape the Soviet invasion leading Hassan and his own gentle father to a terrible fate. Oof, okay. That, that sounds really insane. That sounds really tense. But I have seen a few quotes and a couple of phrases here and there that are written very beautifully. And it just sounds like something that I am going to love, but that's also going to tear me apart. Hopefully in the best way possible. I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for this, but I'm willing to give it a try. I'm kind of scared for what the rest of the books are going to be because I'm not confident that I'll be able to read all of these because I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Let's just, okay, I'm gonna keep an open mind and just hope for the best. Okay, we have 13, hello. Stop, stop, I don't wanna read this one. I really, really don't wanna read this one, stop. This is going to take me to the actual grave. This is going to be what kills me. This may be the worst challenge that I've ever made myself do. It's not that I'm unhappy with the books that I've gotten, but oh my God, I don't know. Like I'm trying to be so positive right now, but this is literally going to kill me. Okay, the hint? I can't believe I did this. The hints that I got was most American of American novels. If there is one book that I wrote this about, it's definitely about John Steinbeck. I don't know which book exactly. Maybe it's East of Eden or the other one, Grapes of Wrath, one or, one or the other. I'm really, really intimidated by John Steinbeck because I tried reading the first chapter of the book that I got by him and I, didn't really understand it because apparently you have to have like this prior knowledge of American history and I not living in the United States of America and not getting an American education. <laughs> I didn't really learn all that much about American history. Um, I'm just, it's the grapes of wrath. <laughs> I'm just, what's that word? I'm a, I'm just accepting my fate right now. I'm just like kind of letting it all sink in. The Pulitzer Prize winning epic of the Great Depression, a book that galvanized and sometimes outraged millions of readers. At once naturalistic epic, huh? At once naturalistic epic, captivity narrative, wrote novel and transcendental, tr transcendent, if I'm struggling just reading the description of the book, imagine how much more I'm going to struggle reading the actual book. I'm just saying. Although it follows the movement of thousands of men and women and the transformation of an entire nation during the Dust Bowl migration of the 1930s, The Grapes of Wrath is also a story of one Oklahoma farm family, the Jodes, who are driven off their homestead and forced to travel west to the promised land of California. I'm going to be so real right now. I don't want to read this book. <laughs> and I'm going to be even realer, it's probably going to put me on a reading slump. Um, this has 455 pages. I mean, it is really floppy, which I appreciate. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna save me from being absolutely confused by it. Even the title of the book has a note. What book title needs a note? You just have to say that you're fine. When you're not um, fine. You just can't get into it because they would um, understand. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to open more books because with the luck that I am having, I'm kind of scared. Like next up, I'll just open yet another classic that I am extremely terrified by. I will be so honest with you guys. I'm really, really scared. I mean, these first three, they're so fine. I could actually love these three. Um, these two are the ones that I'm worried about because they're more leaning towards historical fiction, which is arguably one of my least favorite genres um, right alongside science fiction. So I don't, I don't know how to feel about the fact that I need to read two pretty heavy historical fiction novels at the same time in the same month. I don't know about that. I'll try to go into these with the most open of minds and just 
try and like these? I don't know, I really don't know. I am so scared. Apart from these five books, I also have to read Ana Karenina. Hold up, that's upside down. I also have to read Ana Karenina. So it's a lot of heavy reading, I guess. Like we have a couple of classics here. I feel like I need to pair it up with some fantasy. Wait, you know what I have that I have? You know what I have that I haven't shown you guys? I have this. I was supposed to open this in a vlog, but like I might as well open it now because this is full of books that I really, really want to read. So I think it would be nice to kind of like counter attack these books that I'm kind of scared to read with books that I already know I'm probably going to love. So why don't we end this vlog with a good old fashioned unboxing? Ooh, okay. 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 Okay, it's been a while since I've bought myself like this amount of books at the same time The first book that I see here is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow written by Gabrielle Seven I have heard so many incredible things about this book Friends that I am really close to have said that I am going to love this Chloe from Chloe Bunny also said that I was going to love this So like I just need to know if so many people are telling me that I'm going to love this book And from what I've heard, I think this is just like the perfect type of book for me because I think it's based on like a video game that two best friends work on together and there's a lot of like video game lingo. <laughs> two friends often in love but never lovers come together as creative partners in the world of video game design where success brings them fame, joy, tragedy, duplicity, and ultimately a kind of immortality. <sighs> I am so excited for this. Um, I'm honestly really, really excited for this. So. This is another book that I'm definitely going to be reading in July because I just have to. I have to. Let me tell you how many pages this has. 397 books. Nope. <laughs> this has 397 pages. I totally think I can do that. Okay, it smells like a five star. I'm so sorry, but it smells like a five star. So yeah, I'm excited. Okay, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, this next book, this next book. This is volume this is volume three of Heaven Official's Blessing. As you know, I read the first book earlier in the year, on the year, earlier 2023, like two months ago, and I loved it. I gave it four out of five stars. I've been loving the series. I've only read two volumes, but I did start volume three in June and I never got around to finishing it. One, because I just really prefer reading it physically because I get to see the illustrations in HD, you know, caught in 4K. And it's just not the same seeing these drawings just like in a digital screen. I just, I really want to just see it, see everything. Oh my God, what is this? What's happening? Stop, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm definitely going to be finishing it in July. And I'm also going to be reading it with one of my friends, Mary, if you're watching, I hope you're ready because I am not. Honestly, before I unbox this, I was just feeling very, <laughs> I was feeling very scared and very intimidated. Um, and this is like a complete mood change. So I'm so happy that I decided to unbox this now because I didn't want to end the video with me being terrified. Anyways, the next book in this package is another book that a lot of people have said I'm going to love. It's a contemporary romance and it's written by Tia Williams and it's seven days in June. I have heard so many people loving this book. It's kind of crazy that I haven't read it yet and I kind of hate that I didn't read this in June, but it's okay. I can just pretend it's still June in my head. I'm so okay with that. But anyways, I've heard that this is devastating, but like in a good way. And I am so ready for a devastating romance. I know I have Before I Let Go in my TBR already, but this one just sounds better. <laughs> I don't know. I'll keep an open mind once again, but I'm just really excited for this one because I think it's about like two authors who fall in love and like their books are based that that could be so wrong actually. 7 days to fall in love, 15 years to forget, and 7 days to get it all back again. Teenage Eva and Shane spent one crazy torrid week madly in love and have been secretly writing to each other in their books ever since. Stop. Stop. I love that. Stop. With its keen observations of creative life in America today, as well as the joys and complications of being a mother and a daughter, Seven Days in June is a hilarious, romantic, and sexy as hell story of two writers discovering their second chance at romance. 
I'm sorry. Maybe it's not devastating, but I am like, I am floored by how good this book sounds. The last book in this box, because it is not over, no sir. The last book is volume five of Heaven Official's Blessing. There we go. Look at it in all of its glory. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. Look at this. I love it so much. Let me see if I can get... I don't know who you are, but I love you. These are the four books that I'm adding to my beautiful book collection. I am so excited. Oh my goodness. Wait, let me just put these next to the rest of my July TBR because now I think I'm being a little bit, what's that word? Um, when you like think that you can do something, but you actually can't, I think I'm being, I think I'm being, come on guys, help me out. I think I'm being a little bit too ambitious. Thank you so much, that person in the back who yelled that word. Thank you. <laughs> Apparently this is going to be my July TBR. I don't think I'm ready, but I'm going to try and go into this month with a very open mind. I'm just going to try. And this doesn't include the other two books I wanna read by Carissa Broadbent. <laughs> you know what, I'm not even, I'm just, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if you believe in me, please let me know down below because at this moment in time, like right now as I'm recording this, I don't think I believe in myself. So I would really appreciate some good vibes, you know, just to, to remind me that I have people that believe in me even when I don't. That would be amazing. I would really appreciate that. Let me know which book you think I'm going to love the most. I think it's going to be Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Seven Days in June, which, oh, this one. I think these two books are going to be my favorites and maybe, I don't know. <laughs> like these four books are the ones that I'm most intimidated by. These are fine, these are amazing, but these first four books, I mean, Vampire List that is fine, but like these first few books, I'm just a little bit like, can I actually do that? But yeah, let me know down below. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm really, really scared. Um, I wish I wasn't, but I am. I know that I've read books in the past that have intimidated me and I've come out of it victorious, but something just feels different with John Steinbeck and The Kite Runner. So I'm just hoping, <laughs> I just really need help. <laughs> I just need help. So let me know in the comments below what books you're planning to read this month. I would love to know and discuss and see if I'm the only one that's being maybe a little bit too ambitious with the books that she wants to read this month. And let me know if you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys literally saw me lose my bravery in 4K. So I hope that was enjoyable. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please remember, say it with me, to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It really helps my channel out and it helps me keep doing what I love to do, which is put my mental stability in the line for you and for videos. So I would really appreciate that. I also have a Patreon where I post exclusive content. I host reading sprints and readathons and monthly book clubs. So if that is something that sounds interesting to you, the link is down below as always. If you're still here, please leave this emoji in the comments below so that I know that you stayed until the end and you're a true simp. That brings this video to a close. I love you guys so very much and I will definitely be seeing you next time. Bye. Hey, Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.